Hello and welcome to the video. This is one of three videos that are forming part of the motor and prop tips. Now for those of you that fly fixed wing stuff, uh, I'm a massive wing pilot here, you'll know that if you're coming from the multi-rotor part of the hobby, it can be a little bit complicated because uh, there's an awful lot to think about and how do you make your plane fly faster, how do you make it fly for longer, how do you make it easier to launch? Because a lot of wings are launched by just throwing them into the air and some of them are trickier than others. Uh, the good news is, is you're in the right place because this is Marcus. Say hello, Marcus. Hi, I'm me. <laughs> Marcus is the gentleman behind a tool called eCalc. Now there's a free version you can access and that free version will give you a limited set of motors and props and things that you can choose from, but you can uh, create an account on there and then that will give you access to everything. Now, to create a full account on eCalc isn't a free thing. However, Marcus has very kindly offered a five-day free trial for viewers of this video. Now, it is a time trial. I'll put links down below. But by logging in using those links, you can access the tool, all the features for five days. So you can try it out and you can try the stuff that we're about to show in the video. So everything we're about to show on eCalc is using the full version. Now that allows you to put in motor prop ESC combinations and do some very clever stuff, which allows you rather than, which is the way I used to do it, you buy yourself a motor and a prop and you stick it on the model, you take it for a fly and you go, yeah, I could probably go faster or <laughs> yeah, I could probably make that easier to launch and go and try and find another combination that works. eCalc actually lets you plug that all in and find out how it's all gonna work. So today, we are going to answer one of those three questions. So check out the playlist below, I'll put a link, because we're going to answer how to make your plane fly faster, how to make your plane fly for longer, and how to make your plane easier to launch. Now, Marcus, as well, is based in Switzerland, and he owns a radio control store, uh, ships worldwide. So if you are interested in uh, getting hold of radio control stuff, then check out Marcus's store as well. There's a link down below. Definitely need to put that in here because Marcus has been incredibly generous with his time because not only am I making these videos so that you, the audience, can learn some stuff, uh, I'm actually learning every, t every, every time I speak to Marcus. Uh, I learned something. So, uh, without any further ado, let's get into this video about this topic we're going to cover today. So this time we're going to talk about how to make your model fly for longer. And ultimately, that boils down to flying in the most efficient way possible. Now, normally you'd think about, well, if I make it fly for longer, I'll put a battery in it with a higher milliamp hour capacity. And we'll talk about that, and that's one way to do it. However, there is a little bit of science, and some of that science is actually in eCalc, and you can uh, use it to try and figure out what's going on. Now, the way it tends to work is when you're flying along, uh, there is a certain point within the, the kind of speed and throttle curve of the model where it's flying at its most efficient way. You'll probably have noticed if you're flying with an on-screen display, when you're going at full tilt, you might pull 30 amps. But when you're flying at 50% throttle, it might only pull six. So you'll find that the, the, the curve isn't a straight line. It's actually uh, kind of a little bit exponential. So there is a, there's a magic point that... Uh, Marcus taught me about and this is called the Carson speed. So Marcus can you talk very briefly before we get into what you can do to make your plane fly uh, for longer about what the Carson speed is because this is actually really interesting stuff. So when you are uh, flying uh, straight and level you have some drag on your airplane. As we can see here in this graph the total drag of your model is the blue line. So it starts somewhere in the low speed on high drag, then comes down to the least drag, and then it starts again rising exponentially. This is due to the fact we have two different uh, drag parameters adding up to the total drag. So the most you may, may think of is the parasitic drag. So that's basically the air pressure uh, pulling against your airplane, that's the this one here. So with increasing airspeed, your 
parasitic track does increase exponentially. So that's that's basically just air coming to your wing, and the induced drag is another effect. As you fly slower, you have to increase the angle of attack to stay level, and this adds more drag because the air is seeing more area to resist on. And that, that's really interesting because I know lots of people think about the parasitic drag because that's the reason why, you know, in a motor car, if you double the horsepower, you don't d double the top speed, you know, because you have this uh, this non-linear relationship. And I think lots of us forget about that induced drag and the result is that blue line, is it? Yeah, that's correct. So what what this mean now? We have here again the blue line with the total drag of our aircraft and now we have two interesting points for us. The one is the maximum endurance point, so the on the lowest end of your drag curve. That means you can stay longest in air with your uh, airplane. The other is the maximum ra range, so-called also the Carson speed. That means you get most range of your drive so you just increase the power required so from here to here just a little about 10 percent but your airspeed increases much more so you get more range with only a little more uh, energy used so again we have the same drive as before and we did the calculation now we can also predict the performance of your airplane by clicking here the performance calc button then you go to the performance calc page and we just have to add uh, the fuselage uh, dimensions so like the length so let, let's just put in uh 600 no probably what 800 millimeters yeah. and then diameter of something like i don't know uh, 100 100 okay that's just for a prediction yeah just, so then just for an example hit the calc button again and now we can see a kind of drag here in the brown curve as well so that's the minimum power level we need to stay level so it looks similar to the track curve we had before and now we see the Carson speed is somewhere about 40 kilometers an hour so that's where the gray line touches the brown line there is the Carson speed so there is the point you get the longest distance for the least power consumption so this is something that I wasn't really aware of and until Marcus and I started chatting. Uh, and this is really interesting. And it kind of backs up what, as a pilot, you'll have spotted uh, when you're flying. And if you have it on screen display or telemetry down to your radio, there is a point at, at which you seem to be able to, to make the best progress and use the, the least amount of power for the speed that you're doing. This allows you to kind of figure that out here on the bench before you go to the field. Now we've done the Carson, which is a really little bit uh, interesting bit of theory, and I've not really seen it talked about on YouTube. So thank you for mentioning that and kind of educating me, Marcus. That's been really handy. <laughs> Welcome. Let's jump into what you can actually do on the model to make uh, the model more efficient to stay in the air for longer. So let's jump back into eCalc and let's uh, do, change a couple of things and talk about what the best options are. We have uh, basically the option we increase the capacity of your battery. So that means you jump from maybe 2,200 milliamp hours to... Because um, in here, actually, if you scroll down, Marcus, there's a, there's a, there is a little bit here that talks about the time in the air, isn't there? Yeah, we have... Uh, the mixed flight time, so that's an estimate of how long you can fly with this model. So it's now 16.2 minutes with the basic setup, and now we increase the 
capacity for by 500 milliamp hours, like 2700. Recalculate, and now you see the mixed flight time will increase by uh, three minutes. However, this is just an estimate because it's it's also very dependent on your flying style, how you fly the airplane. So it can can come down considerable if you just a speed guy or you, or you just uh, do easy flying around. Yeah. So it, so for example, if you're <coughs> in the glider and you're going to go up to altitude and then search for thermals. Uh, and, sh and turn the motor off then you know what you're going to get hours if you're good at that yeah. <laughs> uh, but then similarly if you're just going to go you know 100 mile an hour flat out for six minutes until the battery's flat that's going to be the other end of the spectrum so just take this with a pinch of salt but it does give you a relative indication uh you know from what you're currently getting with the model as as to what you get so i use it as kind of a ratio so if it's you know 20 percent more i'll kind of say well i'll probably get 20 percent more out of it now the issue that we've got here of course is that the larger battery is heavier so mm -hmm. potentially you might need a little bit more static thrust to help with your launches and it also might mean that you might get a little bit more because of the increased weight a little bit more drag that might reduce your top end speed so that's one way of doing it let's talk about the other one which is the classic uh, more prop lower kv we have again the, the former drive we had so we go back with the kv we just take the next one just uh, 1700 instead of 2400 kv and see what's happened here so we have to also to increase the uh, diameter of the propeller to be back of about 20 amps we had before. So let's now uh, we can even take an 8 inch prop. Yeah, so we are about the same current as before, and now as you can see, the uh, flight time has also increased uh, a little with the same battery yeah so so that's that's the big tip that i would normally do i would normally increase the prop diameter uh change the prop and uh, reduce the kv that's the way that most of the endurance models work so those are the those are kind of your two main options again just be careful you know you can't just change one thing one part of the system without it affecting how much current it draws how much static thrust you create what the pitch speed is you know it's kind of a trade-off all the time so the the last thing that we can talk about which is harder to show in the ecalc tool but still worthwhile talking about and we mentioned it briefly is about the fact that a lighter model will stay airborne for longer with the same amount of power so the the trick is to use something like a lithium ion battery so like modern lipo batteries a lot of them are really designed for multi rotors capable of delivering extreme amp you know 70 80 90 amps a wing like this is only going to pull 20 25 amps when it's flying at full throttle so you don't need that bigger battery potentially what you could do is you could use a lithium ion um, battery which is the 18650 or 21700 style cells they can give you uh, a lighter battery with the same milliamp hours which will give you that benefit or the other thing you can do is have the same weight of battery as a lipo battery as a lithium ion pack and that it might take you from 2200 to 3000 or 2200 to 4200 milliamps hours and that again will give you a huge increase so using all of these tricks together the cars and speed the most efficient motor and prop setup and the most milliamp hours that you can fit inside the model without overloading it and making it too heavy using all three of those things will give you the longest flight time so again thank you marcus for that that's been really really great and thank you for educating us all about the carson speed uh hopefully now with the other two videos in the series you now know the three things so again be a little bit careful 
a power system is all related to each other as you probably picked up through the series of videos you can't just change the prop and not expect it to change the current which affects how warm the motor gets how under which load the esc is and how much load the battery is you you have to kind of um, play around with it in real life or what i do is i just go in the ecap tool and just plug the numbers in and mess about and eventually you'll find the setup that looks best to you and you can put it on the model and go at the field and try it out Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.